For some more of your common health questions and joining us, as always, is News Channel 5's medical specialist, Dr. David Saria. He is the chief of emergency medicine at Wellington Regional Medical Center. Thanks for stopping by today. Very welcome. Good to see you, Lauren. Good to see you. Don't you think so? You feel a little bit better, even I, even though you still eat the same? I know I do. Matter of yeah. fact, it's lunchtime. I'm yeah, gonna be you're feeling hungry. Better here you're really hungry. Soon. All right, well, we'll jump right in and get to these questions. Yeah. Our first one for you today, it's, it's an interesting one. The question is, can exercise cause heartburn? Well, it's actually, look, I don't want to give yet another reason for people not to exercise, but unfortunately it is true. Uh, exercise can induce heartburn of which you already have because what it does is it actually loosens the sphincter between the esophagus and the stomach. So when you exercise, it loosens and that food can come up. So I want you to do, if you have this problem, I want you to do a few things. Interesting. One, just don't eat up to about two hours before you work out okay. because it's obviously better to have an empty stomach than a full one. And when you do eat, avoid the foods that we know actually contribute to heartburn, like chocolate, unfortunately, mm -hmm. citrus-based foods like orange juice and tomato sauce, and then caffeine, alcohol, things like that. Got it. Very important, though, one last thing, and that is that if you haven't had this diagnosed before and you're having what you think is heartburn when you exercise, it could absolutely be life-threatening heart problems. Make sure you get it checked out, please. Okay, and that's interesting because I bet a lot of people have a little OJ with breakfast and then they're absolutely. off to the gym. Very so common, you bet. There you go. All right, our next question for you today um, is this. What, at what age does macular degeneration begin and is there anything to prevent it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's very common, especially now as we get to a time where the baby boomers are reaching 65 and older. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's called age-related macular degeneration, which means that rare before 60, 65. And what it is is a deterioration of the blood vessels that supply blood flow to the area in the back of the eye of which is required to see. There's two types, dry and wet. Wet mm -hmm. is the more severe form because it's a breakdown of those blood vessels. We don't know much about it. We don't really know what causes it. We know it's hereditary, and we don't really have a lot to treat it with. Mm -hmm. But one thing we do know, and that is that people who smoke, people who are obese, and people who eat a high fatty diet are more likely to have the disease. So those are the things you need to do. Another to reason it. to yeah. get healthy and stay healthy. Yes, you bet. Our final question for you today, can what you eat affect your chances of having appendicitis? Yeah, you know, it's in theory, well, we'll talk about the reality of the situation. That is, it's very common. One in 15 people have appendicitis, and that happens regardless of what you eat. So we've never given recommendations to avoid certain foods. Mm -hmm. But what appendicitis is, is it's a blockage of that little appendix that occurs. It's at the tip of the colon, and it gets inflamed or infected when it gets blocked. So theoretically, we know that maybe what you eat, for example, seeds or nuts, can cause that blockage. Although it doesn't happen very commonly, mm -hmm. and it's a one-time thing because when it occurs, it comes out. Right. So unlike diverticulosis, where we tell you to avoid those types of foods, we don't really give you those recommendations for appendicitis. I so gotcha. eat away. So people still yeah. have their appendix out all the time. It, you know what? They have it out all the time. We don't know what it does, but one thing we do know is you can live without it. So Gotcha. A medical mystery. All right. If you've got a question for Dr. Saria, you can always send it in at our website, WPTV.com. If you scroll down there and look on the right-hand side, you'll see the link to send it in. We thank you so much for stopping by Very again, welcome. and we thank you for staying tuned after this short break. We'll see you then.